So, like Susie just mentioned, we wanted to talk about the Fed a little bit. We are towards the end of the Fed's two-day meeting, and we should get some clarity on the next rate hike this afternoon. Many have projected a 0.25% percentage point increase, the same boost we saw in March after the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank. Do you think the most recent collapse with First Republic could mean no rate hike? What are you thinking? Uh, we have uh, the Fed doing their 25 basis point rate hike at this meeting. I, I don't think that's changed. I think what has changed is the thinking about longer term implications of the regional bank issues. And really, First Republic is representative of a broader class of regional uh, banks, which are heavily invested in uh, commercial real estate, uh, at least as a share of total real estate, commercial real estate lending, they're the biggest share. So the question then becomes, will other banks show financial difficulty or will the tightening of credit conditions in order to retain and improve liquidity by those banks be uh, enough to significantly slow uh, economic activity beyond what the Fed already thought was in place. The counterbalancing view to that is that some of the recent indicators that the Fed has been watching for weakening have not weakened. And so there's the market is today a little bit split on whether or not the, the uh, Fed would, after this meeting, pause. And I saw one of the former uh, governors uh, made a statement today about a hawkish pause, which I think is maybe stretching the limits of the English language a little bit. Uh, but I, I think his, his point was that the, the Fed, because of those indicators not having weakened, would like to retain an upward bias based on how future information comes in, but must be cognizant of the fact that this banking issue could be bigger than they think. I, I went back and looked at a little data <clears throat> thinking about banking problems. And in the, this is not a situation like 2007 to 2009. However, it can take time for markets to reveal other structural flaws so in that time period between the Bear Stearns failure and the Lehman failure, that was six months between those two kind of things. So that's part of the reason why uh, markets are being uh, cautious and why the Fed may potentially pause, but with a, a continued bias uh, uh, toward increases if they don't see improvement in in the uh, particular indicators. So I was reading another Q and A you did a few months ago where you were you mentioned that the Fed um, owns the biggest bulk of mortgage debt and it's it wants out of that. Um, but regional lenders don't really seem well positioned to pick up the slack there. So, what entity do you think might step up to the plate? Yeah, that, that's a great question. It's one we're we're thinking through. The Fed is the single biggest holder of mortgage-backed securities in the world as a single entity. The banking sector uh, across all banks actually hold more collectively than the Fed does, but as a single holder, they're the biggest. And they have made it a policy statement that they eventually would like to eliminate that portion of their portfolio. One of the things that you see in the market today is that the interest rate spreads between uh, or in the mortgage market are very wide. And that's actually a signal that the market is uncertain about who's going to absorb that whole supply. Because to your point, regional banks are not. They're, they have liquidity issues at the present time. And so, and, and some of them are, uh, are in the mortgage-backed security space because they bought those securities at lower yields and rates rise, so that drops the value of those securities. So it's not gonna be those banks. So the question is who picks that up? And right at the moment, it doesn't seem to be international investors. It's perhaps more like money market mutual funds uh, or some other uh, some other private investors, but they are going to require higher yields. That will hold mortgage rates higher than they would have been if those yields uh, were to narrow, uh, maybe as much as 100 basis points or a full percentage point. You could see that emerging in the market when 
Mortgage rates went up to about 7.1% very briefly back in November or thereabouts. All of a sudden, the stories emerged about lenders requiring borrowers to bring money to the table to buy down the interest rate. Well, they, the reason they did that was because <clears throat> fixed income investors would not buy mortgage-backed securities backed by 7% mortgages because their view was when the Fed ultimately stopped raising rates and then eased, those loans would all prepay because mortgage rates would fall. And so those mortgage-backed securities would just go away very quickly. So there weren't investors at that yield. Now that's not the case now. There are some investors that will hold six to six percent mortgage-backed securities. So there's okay. some pickup, but the spreads are still very wide.